record on the cloud. Okay, so Gustav Dore did do some uh, paintings, but um, really he was a printmaker. That was like the, that was the, 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 the majority of his work. Um, all right, so this is, I'm assuming this is in King, King Solomon's um, temple or whatever. And we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use a center line and then we're gonna build it off of the center and we're gonna make this really, I, what I think is gonna be a pretty interesting column. I just have to make sure everything's straight and I'm not too zoomed out. You could, you could sketch shots, you could sketch Solomon if you want. Actually, look at him over there. He's got that epic crown. I am fascinated by crowns too, by the way. <clears throat> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna fire this thing up. Um, I think where the like a safe place to start is gonna be um, where the column uh, meets the meets the the ground, and it's actually not the ground; it's really actually a shelf. So see this darkest part of the shadow right there? That is where the column meets the ground plane. So I'm just gonna put in a horizontal. I guess it just coincides exactly with the horizontal on my paper. That just makes life a little easier. So that's the ground. I'm just gonna call it the ground. It's not technically the ground. It's actually like um, the, the part of the bench that I think that he's sitting on. And then <clears throat> before we even start stacking all of the elements and we are gonna stack the different parts, um, we need to think about all of the elements of the um, column as like, meat on a barbecue skewer. So the barbecue skewer is perfectly straight. And then you throw on some meat, you throw on a you throw on the zucchini, you throw on the mushroom, put on the tomato, more meat. And they all are, you know, in theory, they're all on the center of that same barbecue skewer. And that's what's going to happen here. So we've got these two elements to the base. Those are two moments we're going to supply it on there. Then we got the transition that's leading up into the columns. You can actually see that the way these columns were composed were um, basically stone barrels that they stacked one on top of the other. And they actually did pour um, you know, metal down the middle. Um, there's all kinds of strategies that how they did it, but this is, I'm not, this is not an architecture, the architecture of the ancient um, civilization lesson. It's just a, we're just gonna draw a column. Um, so where we need to do, what we need to do is get that center skewer and just draw a center line. And hopefully I'm drawing it nice and straight. And then we're just gonna go about stacking elements on this picture. <clears throat> the center line does two things. It allows you to measure the width of objects. So I'm just gonna do the first one. I'm gonna build a trapezoidal base. Now I'm like, okay, well, how far is you know this point from the center? You know, how far is the very bottom? I don't really know. I could estimate it. I'm gonna estimate it. Oh God, oh God, get it, get it. Okay, so that's my estimation. The nice thing about the horizontals is that everything's a horizontal is straight across. So you can use, I, <clears throat> there's a device that you can use called um, a torn piece of paper. And I just did that. Did you really? Good. So I really made, did. And I must, I'm going to move it. I must say there. I was spot on. Oh, I'm proud of you. All right. So you go, you put a dot in the middle and then you do a dot on the width and then you just slide it over. And I was short, just a hair. Um, these are all estimations, so don't feel like you have to get it exactly right. Um, the more correct you are, sometimes the more happy you feel, but it's not necessarily true. Um, all right, then we're going to come in a little bit and we're going to get a rectangle. Now, it's interesting because, you know, normally I would say that, you know, the edges would be kind of crisp, <clears throat> but I think this... I think this temple that he's in is already a little tattered. Like, I think it's already aged a little bit. So I'm not saying anything's broken, but like, it looks like these edges are kind of rounded off. And that could happen through time. It could actually just be the design as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's good. <clears throat> okay, so just like a tree trunk, this column has to have a transition 
that you know goes from the narrow column into this much wider base. So off of the center here, before I do any details necessarily, I'm gonna put this little rounded foot and I'm gonna try and curl in. So I came in a little bit from each side, came in a little bit from each side, and I'm really hoping, <clears throat> well, I'm really hoping it's symmetrical. Um, I haven't really added any details. We're gonna get to, once we have the structure of it, we can go in and add as many details as you want. And on top of that, you can embellish it. You know, so you can make the, um, you can make this thing as, you know, as interesting as you want. And there is the, the, the column that, that Doré did, I'm pretty sure he invented it himself. I don't think he would like, you know, I don't think he actually knows what the designs inside the temple were. <clears throat> um, okay. <clears throat> so let's bring it up to, I don't know, let's say like right here. I'm gonna pull up one side and it's, I know that it's getting a little bit more narrow and I'm just going to draw the top of that column. This might be a moment that you could measure if you want it. You can measure it from the center out, the center out. You can eyeball it. And so there's that completed <clears throat> kind of first section. Okay, it looks like we got bumped out. Oh, you want to check the waiting room, Trevor? Yep, I think I just, I just think I let, um, I think I let everybody in. I don't think, huh, who did, who was, who was out there? Did I miss anybody? Trevor's in there. Oh, who's Mrs. F? Do I know that person? I guess you don't have to say anything if you don't want to. <clears throat> um, all right, nice column. Believe it or not, this is a, this is a warm up. Sometimes I think architecture is easy because it's like perfectly symmetrical, um, but then sometimes perfect symmetry is actually hard. Um, the next piece that we're going to do after this, it's a column, um, but it's actually a tree. It's literally a tree trunk that's got roots and it's a it's a massive cedar that's been uh, cut down, and it'll be a little bit more organic um, and a little less architectural. All right, so I'm going to come up. I'm going to do my next column. Might be up a little bit high. Maybe I'm going a little big. That's okay. Um, I'm gonna do the width of my next column. Sometimes um, I'll do the left side and then match the right side to it. Sometimes I do the right side and match the left side to it. It's just a good skill to be able to have, to be able to go you know, left side, right side. And it, it is going to be just, um, it's just an estimation. Um, all right. So as far as decoration goes, I am going to forget that any of this special stuff is up here. I'm going to try and get to the top of the column. So I'm going to come across. And what the part that I'm drawing right now, I'm trying to find um, before all of the lion decoration that's up there. I'm just going to find the top and just like the bottom, the top of the column angles in. Do you think that looks even? I hope so. The, um, this distance to this distance this distance to that distance. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, so that'll be the capstone. And then I'm gonna pull it in and I'm gonna get what I would call is like kind of like the, almost like the neck of it. Came in equal on both sides. If you observe anything else, you know, do it. Do what you see. So I found that top capstone and then the neck, and then I'm gonna connect the neck to the rest of my column. Nice warm up. Um, honestly, this is, this is like, this is, I wouldn't call it hilarious, but um, 
if you see all of the designs that are going on inside this uh that lion's head it looks like he's got like ears or tassels on both sides and actually and there, is that a tongue it could be water pouring out i mean it's why it looks like my cocker spaniel um i'm gonna <clears throat> try to encapsulate all of that and i'm gonna put all of it inside of a rectangle so you want to think about like the way a um the stonemason would design this thing. You have to start off with a block of stone and then the carver comes in and starts carving away at it. Um, that's where this is going to be. So, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm really not gonna do much, but if I were to do symmetrical ears, I'm just gonna make an eyes, nose, mouth, and I'm gonna turn that into my dog. There is my Cocker Spaniel. So I'm not making Aww. light of it. I'm not joke. I'm not like joking. I'm just trying. I mean, I'm joking a little bit. Um, I'm just saying we're not going to spend all day doing all of these intimate de details, but you could, you know what I mean? He did. Um, this is, this is just, this is a warm up, just so I can get a sense of um, proportion, um, a sense of light and shade. And, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but the, um, the light side, the light is coming from the left. So the shadow of the column is the right side. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do a little bit of oversimplification. So I'm gonna put a circle and a triangle. I'm gonna put a semicircle and a half triangle. Semicircle. Semi oh. Nice. So like I said, we're not doing all the intimate carving, but there is stuff there. So I, I mean, I feel like we should put something on there. Um, I just did, um, I'm going to do a semicircle here and then a triangle on top of that. It looks like I'll do a semicircle here and then a half triangle on top of that. And honestly, if you could very easily go crazy with this and just get like super involved. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do get super involved unless everyone's like, draw it. Mm. So the way that we go, um, I usually use construction lines, which are the lines that were necessary to get um, you know this far along in the drawing. Um, and the main construction line obviously was the center line. So I think I'm going to lose the center line now that I have all the parts. And then I think I'm going to add um, just a little bit of shading. I'm going to kind of focus on the column. The, I love that the, uh, the, you know, the tops of these are, you know, useful and, and visible, you know, like the, the separations between the columns. So the light side is the left side. So I'm not going to put as many marks. And then the right side, um, the way that this artist, the way that Doré shaded it, from what I can see on there, he's using basically two directions, mostly vertical lines, and then a couple uh, diagonals. So I'm just gonna practice with the um, verticals first. And it seems like the darker it goes, the closer the verticals get together. And if those lines are closer together, you know, assuming that they're the same thickness, um, they should get darker. They should appear darker. And, you know, they, it's not like the columns don't have straight lines in the light. They're just less of them and they're more spaced out. <clears throat> There's a lot of ways of shading, which I'm sure you guys all know. I mean, I could blend this out with my, I could blend this out with my finger or with a, with a blending stump. You know, in painting, you just choose a darker color and you paint it. Um, I'm using pencil here, so I'm just going to use, you know, a more plentiful amount of uh, straight lines on the side. And it, and if I'm consistent, it should read like a shadow. You know, if I if I go up the whole side, and right now this is where the drawing I think looks most awkward because some of it's colored, some of it's shaded, some of it's not. Um, you know, some of the shapes aren't really resolved. You know, and we could add more decoration. So, I mean, look at that. There's like these little leaves, leaves rather, in the neck of this. 
that's cool. So that's the other cool thing about you know this these these ancient designs and, and architecture. There's each little zone that you've established, you know, could be another opportunity to decorate. Um, art is decorative. Um, Renoir spoke about that a lot. That like, you know, you never want to lose touch with you know, decorations we we think are a little bit superficial. You know, like what color wallpaper you're gonna have. You know, match the art to the couch or whatever. Um, you know, site specific installations. You know, are important and the content of your decorations matter they can be they can reflect your personality they can reflect your likes they can reflect your religion they can reflect you know your core beliefs um and you know it's just it, they really are a, a reflection of um the culture the reflection of the person and the family so like you can call it decoration but it's like it's not insulting it's kind of like our perception of the word decoration, at least my perception of the word decoration is not necessarily, um, I don't know, I've, I hold art up to like the highest esteem. I mean, art is my favorite thing. I've learned so much about what it is to be human by studying art, you know, being able to time travel. You know, this is in a way, um, you know, Gustave Doré is reading, you know, the, the probably the Songs of Solomon, which is Old Testament scripture. And then he's having an idea of what he thinks it is. So it's like, he's kind of, this is, this guy is working, you know, 150 years ago, some 160 years ago, something like that. So in a way we're traveling back in time, 160 years where there was a man that was reading um, that had really good art training that was reading this writing from, you know, 2000 years before him. And maybe even earlier than that, actually, I think Solomon might be even like, way older it was like ancient even in ancient times so I, I don't know the exact dates on it but you know to have these types of um, visual representations of by people that have come before us um it really makes it, it it really makes everything it makes it all come alive and puts our own lives kind of into context so you know and i found you know i get i have better dreams you know i have like more vivid dreams you know having drawn you know understanding better memory. I actually am convinced that I would have been a better athlete if I had drawn, like if I had this, if I knew what I knew now, I feel like I would be a little bit, I think it would have helped me in athletics. In terms of seeing the field, anticipating the next move, finding rhythms that exist within, um, you know, patterns that exist. <clears throat> Oh, that's neat. Um, so I forgot to take out the uh, center lines here at the base, um, but I wonder if I can even like integrate the the center line in the base in terms of the lines that already exist. You know, the lines that need to be there. There's a line that already exists, and how can I work that into the lines that need to be there? And it's happening. Whoa, neat. Um, these lines down here, they're so close together. Have you ever seen the side of a, I think it's dimes and quarters that have the little ridges inside. And then nickels are smooth. Uh, they don't have the ridges in the side. So these straight lines are, um, you know, in the quarter and dime camp. If you're feeling if you're feeling confident, you can those semicircles that I made. You could put something. I don't know if they're floral. They look like petals of some kind. The only thing I would recommend is whatever you do on the left side, do it on the right side. So it's like I, I say that a lot. I, I don't. I almost don't care what you do. I just try to make it symmetrical. <laughs> And these columns, you know, the top of the, oh, that's interesting too. Um, let me slide this over a hair. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to see where this light source is coming from. I think the light is coming from the, obviously the left, but maybe even a little bit, I guess it's a little bit above. Look at the, um, the column itself is the shadow side of an object. And that's important to know. 
And then as this column um, gets closer to the wall, it actually throws a shadow onto the wall that's next to it. That's kind of cool. And so in terms of language, you have the, you know, when people say light and shade, um, you have the shadow side of things, but then you also have the cast shadow, which is like the shadow that, you know, gets thrown. You can actually see, you can see even on my pencil, if you just look at my pencil, the, the top of my pencil is light. The underside is the shadow part of the pencil. And then the cast shadow is the, is the shape of the shadow that's being thrown on the paper. I mean, it's everywhere. Wherever there's light, there's shade. And, um, you know, when objects are close to one another, that's when um, it can be confusing because not only is it the shadow side of a of the column, but it's also the the cast shadow, and they run right up next to one another. Sweet. <clears throat> okay. Well, hopefully you did well. If you didn't, that's okay. We're we're gonna have another one. I think you'll like the next one. This one really was a warm up. So all of these drawings you could spend you know, you could spend two hours on or more. Um, but I just wanted to, I mean, I probably spent more time on this than I was expecting to, but I just like, I got so into having the, uh, the column looks so nice. <clears throat> and I didn't put a background in, but it does appear that there's a, if you look at the base here, there's like a light background on this side. And then um, it trying to transitions into a darker background. So I, I was showing that I was like, maybe the light source is kind of low because you see a little bit of shadow that Solomon is casting on the wall. I assume it's Solomon. And then there seems to just like light glow, you know, and maybe there's, there looks like there might even be smoke there. So maybe there's a, a light source even behind him, like there's a lamp or something. Cause it goes from like light and the higher it gets on the wall, the darker it gets. I'm just pointing out observations. I'm not saying you have to draw it. I just like, I love decoding art. <clears throat> and um, I had a couple requests from, uh, not requests really, but they were um, comments from my adults and they said that they really loved um, you know, seeing how, like how other people were, how other people were doing and getting feedback from me. So does anybody want to, anybody want to hold up their, hold up their column so I can check it out? Sebastian, how are you feeling? Um, I've actually decided to more focus on the old man. Uh-huh. So Sweet. I'm just sketching out the figure of the old man and getting some background. Um, I love it. I'm glad. Thank you. Anybody else want to show your column? Chad, you want to show? Maya? I mean, I honestly, I wanted to start off with something easy and then I'm like drawing this thing. I'm like, oh my God, it's like really hard. <clears throat> well, it didn't seem to be hard for you. Nice work. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we're gonna do a, um, we'll do like what, a two minute warning? I thought the grid showed everybody, but it doesn't. There you go. Okay, one, two, two, four, six, eight. No, it shows everybody. Okay, cool. Well, if you feel like showing it, you can hold it up. Mm -hmm. um, so most of these prints are, I wouldn't call them like popular, they're not popular, but they're accessible. Um, so if you were to um, Google, and not, yeah, if you were to Google um, Doré, so it's D-O-R-E with a little hyphen on it. If you were to Google Dore, D-O-R-E, and then Solomon, S-O-L-O-M-O-N, 
you're not guaranteed to get like a high resolution image, but this image will come up. So if we, if, if we move on and you still want to see, if you still want to see stuff, um, it should be okay. All right. Let us try, you guys up for trying a shield? Let's try a shield first. I actually had things labeled, things marked off. I thought I had it marked off. Okay, here's one of the shields. Where's the other shield? This book has so many, this book has so many decapitated heads, you wouldn't even believe it. The Old Testament is just like full of people chopping each other's heads off. This is Salome. Um, I can't find it, but it was the one thing that I was really taken by. Look at this poor, this poor woman. She's being thrown out of the, the death of Jezebel. Rough stuff. Um, that being said, there's some really cool shields and armor in here. So I'll, I'm gonna hopefully be able to show the entire soldier. And then if you wanna just focus on the shield or the staff, or I'm gonna do the shield because I think it's super cool. Slide this over. Um, so he's not Goliath, but actually the Goliath character looks a lot like him. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at all the doggies. I didn't see that before. Oh my goodness, there's all the dogs. We might have to show, I might have to leave it so you can look at the dogs. I'll zoom out a little bit more. Yes. That's a signature down there, by the way. Gustav Doré. There's a really great song uh, called Jezebel. And it's sung over and over again by a bunch of really, I think the one that I'm thinking of is Leonard Cohen's version of Jezebel. To play that. Stay out of the shadows. Yes. <clears throat> All right, cool. Um, all right, so what the thing that I loved about this this shield in particular um, is that it it like it, it feels like it feels like a little um like a little cone or a little like teeny pyramid see how there's like a center let's i'm going to sketch this and i think i might sketch it kind of large so the one the, the second shield that i had picked out was a perfect circle this one is a little bit um angled so it's kind of turned away so instead of drawing a circle and you could in fact draw a circle and it would still look like a shield but i'm going to draw mine as an oval Hmm. I'm actually going to start again. I had to start again because I was too far off of the screen. Um, drawing circles, um, perfectly curvilinear elements, I find very challenging. And what artists do whenever you get into that situation where you're like, it's too curvy and you just can't get the proportions right just break it down into straight lines. Just like, even if you have like 12 straight lines, that will get you to where you need to be so that you can then curve it out later. You can always curve out a series of straight lines. Um, it's really hard to straighten out a curve. Um, all right. 
And then, oh, and that's the other thing. When I, um, you know, when I choose subjects, I choose subjects because I actually don't know 100% what's going on. Um, and I kind of want to figure it out. And, you know, one of the things that I saw about this is like, there's, I know there's a highlight, which is kind of interesting. And then the light to dark, excuse me, to dark to light, to dark to light, to dark to light, it almost makes like this pinwheel going around the center. Um, and then of course there's the, um, these rivets that are around the outside. And I wonder if there's kind of a, a symmetry or a relationship to the, the pinwheel nature of the lights and darks and, <clears throat> and the, the rivets that are in there. Um, I became fascinated with shields there's this unbelievable, if you go into the ancient wing at the Met in New York, um, they have you know a, a 2000 year old um, shield that's got, um, it's almost, it's almost, it, looks like a, it looks like a sun actually. There's like, a, there's like a, a, a rivet in the middle and then like a sun or a compass, they're all radiating out from the center. Um, anyway, it's just, you know, imagine being, you know, a thousand, you know, a thousand years ago and having to, 2000 years ago, and not only do you have to have a shield, but you have to design on the shield. It's just an opportunity for artists to like, you know, flex a little bit. All right, so let's find the middle. I'm just gonna put a, a dot here. And I'm gonna come out and that first little, that first little triangle of the um, highlight you know, one of the most important things when you're working on white paper is that, and he's doing the same thing because he's, he's a printmaker. So you have to really protect the light of your paper. So if, if you look at the, the, the soldier here with the shield, he's got a couple highlights on his uh, necklace and on his breastplate, this metal reflection on his breastplate. He also looks like he's got some shin guards down here. So he's got lights. It's not that there aren't lights on him. It's just like the majority of this whole character is mostly dark, it's mostly mid-tone grays and then dark grays. Um, so as we sketch, um, as we sketch the parts that need to be colored in, um, we just have to be aware it's particularly of um, the light areas. So we don't fill them in or color them in. Um, all right. So the easiest way for me to see this um, at the moment is I see three dark triangles. So there's a dark triangle in this bottom part. I might just color that in. Dark triangle one. Um, there's a dark triangle in the very, you know, almost a kitty corner opposite of our uh, light node. I'm gonna add some tone. And I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not that I'm making this up because I, I, I know what I'm seeing. It's just, I, don't, I still don't know how the drawing is going to come out. And that's kind of the excitement. And that's also the terrifying thing about art is that you just you don't necessarily know. So it does, it does take some courage uh, to keep going. Um, all right. So the, speaking of keeping going, this last one looks like it comes up. Um, sometimes when you work in circles, you can almost think about like, the the like a, a 12 like a clock you know like i'm looking at this square the bottom one like this down here it, it, the dark triangle like goes almost down to six o'clock and then kind of comes up to i don't know 7 30 and then like around eight o'clock to like 10 o'clock is the next dark one and we're using um we're using graphite so graphite is going to be different than the metal that he's carving into. So I like to notice the directions that he's making the strokes, um, but I'm not like married to them. I can, I mean, I can make, uh, I can make marks going any direction I want and I can even smooth things out. Um, all right, so the anatomy of this, the anatomy of this, of the shield, um, these are kind of, these are, I've got the, the kind of the pinwheel lights and darks. I think there's gonna be grays in between, but before I start shading everything, I wanna like keep adding more things. Um, before we do the rivets, I just noticed this, that like the, um, the shield has a thickness to it. So do you see how there's like a light glow along the rim? It's almost like it's, so this is the outside rim of the top portion. And then there's this like thickness to the shield that I'm, it may, it may not be a hard edge, but it's definitely, 
<clears throat> there's definitely a border that stays light along the top of this shield. So drawing is like you, you draw to discover what's going on. Um, hopefully the shield turns out good, turns out well, um, but we'll, we'll figure out as we go. Um, right at 12 o'clock, there seems to be two rivets. A rivet there, I'm gonna use a circle for a rivet. And then I'm just gonna count, I'm gonna see, and then there's one at six o'clock, that's nice. One in the shadow down here at six. And then there's one, two, three on that side. And I assume there'll be one, two, three on the other. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'll do one in the middle, one in this corner, and then one down in this corner. So like I said, I found two at the top, one at the bottom, and then three on either side. I'm sure another intelligent person could find another way of um, describing it. Oh God, no. And right here, there's two more. This one has two. I guess that's okay. Do you see that one? Can you see it on there? I'm going off. I'm going off the screen just like you guys. So. <clears throat> wow, this is amazing. So now I think that we can start shading this thing. Um, the light looks like it's coming from up here or even up above. And so I'm getting a, um, we're getting the light on this part and then everything else seems to be like a gray. There's a, there's a cast shadow on the bottom of the rivets. So the rivets almost feel like a crescent moon. Yes. They protrude out, I can throw a shadow at the bottom. <clears throat> now I'm just going to color this thing in. Knowing that my first pinwheels have got to be the darkest. The uh, another dark moment that I'm just seeing right here is by is on this top left hand side, like around 11 o'clock. Wonder what that's about. On 11 o'clock on that shield, it goes really dark. <clears throat> so it looks like there's the shading at the bottom is a whole bunch of straight lines. But look at the, um, the whole top half of this thing. There's like lines that are running circular. Like almost like the uh, center of the shield is a um, it's like a water and then you drop a pebble in the water and then the, the, the um, waves radiate out, you know, the ripples in the water. And I'm, this whole top portion really helps to do those ripples. I had not seen that before. Yeah, and actually, I guess I did kind of see it. You know, I'm looking at the edge that, you know, how I drew that edge towards the top where it was light and dark. That line almost gets blended in. Just like the construction line. So these are, they could be really long ones, or they can be a lot of short ones, but man, <clears throat> the curves, the, I guess it's radiating lines. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Like you drop a pebble in the water and then the surface of the water, they all ripple out. You know, imagine if you turn one of those ripples into the shield, turn on its side. Oh, that's kind of cool. You know how like the drop, you drop the water in and like, the drop comes up and then it. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to draw something completely off topic. I guess it's not totally off topic. <clears throat> if you used initial lines um, to shade in your pinwheel, I think we can go really dark. I can start to get really dark with that pinwheel. And I was talking about my um, this to my other my other class. Even though the the shadow of the of the um, shield is is dark, the background is even darker. Like that wall is even darker. So that's 
that may or may not be the right move on my part. I'm taking kind of a big risk, not taking a big risk, but the, the, uh, my pencil is graphite. It can only go so dark. So if you already went really dark with your shield, um, if you make the background dark, it, the shield might just blend right into it. But it looks like I didn't shade dark enough. I mean, on the shield. So at least it can um, smooth out. One of the tools that I use a lot, and I don't have one right now, but it's a, it's called a, a blending stump. And it just blends out the uh, graphite. You can blend with your finger though, if you want. Dude, the shield is amazing. <clears throat> is anybody, did anybody do the rest of the soldier, by the way? I'm going to, um, he's got a pretty cool spear. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing. Um, you know, team, I don't know if you guys remember, but last week when we were drawing, um, the silhouettes, you could, um, if you drew like an initial line, you could carve it down. I'm just noticing right here that my shield is a little bit large. So I'm actually using the background color to cut in and make it smaller. Same thing down here. It's tough when you have an object that's part of a larger composition and you're just trying to study that one thing. It doesn't necessarily make sense when it's all by itself, but it definitely has a dark background. And I, I feel like I would not be doing my shield justice if I didn't shade a little bit of the background. So I'm creating a new border so I don't have to draw everything. I mean, so I don't have to shade everything in the whole my whole piece of paper now it's just like it looks like a shield hanging on like a dark wall <clears throat> i blended the background because there's really no texture but i haven't blended on the shield itself um i'm not saying it's good or bad i'm just i'm nervous I was describing shape. I was describing blending uh, to the other class. It's like it's almost like Pandora's box. Like once you start blending in an object, you kind of need to blend it everywhere. So I think I'm just going to hold off. I'm trying to think of, um, I'm trying to think of metal, you know, when I, when I'm looking at this or even like, um, not, maybe not metal, but like, I was thinking about like, uh, like brass. I don't know. That is one heck of a shield. So some of the, um, the, the rivets that are on the right side seem to be bright. And then the rivets on the left side seem to be a little bit darker. So I might tone those down a little bit because this whole bottom half of the shield is really you know, quite in shadow. I'm not feeling very confident about my drawing. Did anybody else get a good one or, is, or am I just choosing things that are like way too hard? Stacy, have you sketched any of these yet? I actually um, did the column and I've been- You were still uh, working on the column. Have been going on here. So I've just really been into watching you do the shield. Okay.
Oh, okay. So now my main effort, I think I'm gonna, um, my main effort I think is going to be to, I need to get, if this, if this part of the shield is the lightest, and I'll zoom in a little bit because the, the exposure is getting a little bit too great, but the, um, I need this part to stand out. So therefore every, so therefore I need to shade the entire shield except for some of the lighter rivets. So here we go. It's gonna do some tone. And it's amazing. I thought I covered it, but I really didn't. There's still plenty of lights on here. So going side to side. Um, some of the lines are radiating out from the center. Some of them are, you know, curvilinearly radiating out from the center. Look at all that. I can darken all this. I'm trying to shade everything except for. And then if you look in the middle, the middle goes actually quite dark too. I haven't seen that. It's almost like the darker I make the shield, the brighter that highlight goes. And some of the rivets are pretty bright. I can, I can definitely see that, but they might be too big. My, I made my rivets huge. All right, so I'm gonna punch my darks where I, where I really want the darkest moments. Um, I had already punched my light where I erased that highlight right there. And so I'm trying to push the contrast. So wherever I see super dark uh, shadows, I'm gonna like lay those in now. And then if there were any, uh, if there were any other highlights, I would pull those out as well. Some really, even in the light area, there is some, there are some dark notes, even though it's mostly gray, there are some dark spots. And, you know, my shape, like out of context too, like the shield not being attached, attached to a soldier it looks crazy. It looks weird. Wait, it looks like a. Uh, does it look like a UFO? It looks like a UFO. It looks like I'm looking down. It looks like I'm on the ground looking up at a UFO that's about to abduct me. That's almost scary. I have not. I have not been abducted by aliens. <clears throat> but that's probably what it would look like. Anybody get a cool shield? Maya, Kaya. Trev, how's your shield? Um, one of my, one of the whole, the whole point of my wanting to draw this was that it looked like it came to a point in the middle, like it was almost like like a like a tip of an arrow or something, and I just didn't even I don't even think I really got that. So I'm gonna try and make it feel like this shield angles up into the top. All right, you win some, you lose some. Stace, can I see your column? Yeah. I, mean, I didn't do a whole lot on it, but of course you can. <clears throat> oh, wow. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's really pretty. Didn't do a lot. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, amaze.
All right, I'm going to do a two minute warning on this one. I would, I would love to see anybody that wants to show because I, um, I feel like I need, uh, I need some inspiration because my, my shield is not doing what it needs to do. I think also, I think that also the issue is, is that when the shield is out of context, like it, it doesn't, it does look a little funny. Even though, I mean, I'm comparing my shield to the drawing and it's actually pretty good. Um, but I don't know why it's not looking, I don't know why I'm not happy with it. Um, and, and it stopped snowing here too. You know, I was just talking to, to my son. We didn't get a whole lot of snow here or I was really looking forward to a lot of snow. Is there going to be I mean, more? Is there going to be more tonight? They are call, calling for more, and I will be the woman with the weather and let you know that at do, 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 starting at eleven p.m., it's calling for snow through twelve p.m. tomorrow. Wow. Okay, and so they're that's talking how, about that's how we're going to get the eight inches everywhere from forty percent up to 70 percent uh and a range you know in between after and when we were or, or like this is during from now until 12 o'clock tomorrow or is this is that that 40 to 70 percent after that like noon on no 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 it's from 11 o'clock tonight all the way through tomorrow noon we'll be having snow and the percentage of likelihood is 40 to 70. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. Okay, so we might not get any snow. I know, I know. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> um, okay, well, that's it for the man-made objects. Well, not necessarily. Um, let's try, let's try this tree stone. I think the tree stone. Did, did anyone want to show? Feel, feel free. It's a high pressure day. Oh, that draping is beautiful. Oh, in my screen or on somebody else's screen? On your screen. You know, I keep thinking about your, uh, I guess it's the Tuesday class, was it, when there was discussion about draping? Yeah. So now every time I look at something with draping, I'm, you know, thinking about that. Got it in mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at those roots. I know. I love these roots. Um, and the roots, the nice thing about this tree is like once you get the component parts, um, they can be all, you, you know, you can design your own root system sort of once we get the feel of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that gonna be enough real estate? A little bit less. Ah, uh, you knew I was getting ready to ask. I know, Stace, I can, yep. read, I can read your mind at this point. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm gonna go like that. So I get a clean line. All right, so this is the picture. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole, you can see the whole scene. I guess there was a, um, Solomon ordered these huge cedar trees to come down, like massive trees, old like, like thousand year old trees to come down to build this temple. And they cut down these two massive trees and then they actually turned the trees into um, like a wagon so that they mm -hmm. could like transport them. So they actually put axles on the trees and are like moving the trees as if they were, um, you know, an actual like mode of transportation, which I think is an incredible, I've never even like heard of that. You know, something that's so huge in order to, in order to like move it, you turn it into a car. <laughs> anyway, the, the tree stump 
um, I think it's just like one of the most beautiful things. Um, and it's sort of like a, it's, it's column-esque. And I think it's gonna be something that's super beautiful. You can always, I mean, and you can always uh, use these. Um, all right, so the place to start for the, um, the place to start for the, the, the tree trunk is gonna be, well, hold on a second, let me move this, okay. Is gonna be this one dot. So this one moment that's in the very center of the tree, um, that's where we're gonna start. So let's put like a little, um, maybe like a little star, like a little sideways star. And like the, um, like the ripple in the, you know, like the shield, um, it is going to be a round object, but we're seeing it above looking down, but only so slightly. So the from front to back is really not very far. So I'm putting a tick from the front to back and then a little tick from left to right. And we can then build the cylinder or the ellipse. Oh no, oh no. Sorry about that guys. Um, so you want to think about the, the top of this tree trunk as a like a tabletop. So it is this is this shape like a circle seen from the side is technically an ellipse. They call it an ellipse, but it looks like a um, I don't know. What does that look like? It looks like a blimp. It looks like a really skinny blimp or even like a hot dog. It's like a hot dog with like, you know, slightly pointier edges. And then like classic, like, like any tree, the trunk is narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. And so because they wanted to get the most amount of length, um, they cut it relatively low. So when you build the sides, this is gonna be the bark. And we get a little, you know, a little short passage of bark before it actually turns into the root system which is gonna widen out. And the roots, um, you know, they remind me of like, um, like lava pouring or, um, or even like uh, almost like tentacles on like a, an octopus or something. Um, the, the octopus tentacles, they do start thicker at the body and then get thinner towards the end, but they're kind of more consistent. Um, you know, these guys, the roots really start uh, thick and then as they snake down, they get thinner. <clears throat> and oftentimes when, um, when I'm drawing tree branches, you'll do you know, one side and the other, and then you do one side and then the other, and you do one side and the other, left side, right side, left side, right side. And you can do that for almost every branch. So it's like left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side. And I, I suspect that this root system is not gonna be any different. So as you build um, you know, these roots out, left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side, you can use curved lines or straight lines. I drew my tree too big. There we go. It's not too, too big. I have to make my, uh, the roots a little bit smaller. And we have to find, I have to think about the animal that this reminds me of. Is it a snake? Left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side. Up, down. Up, down, and it'll disappear into the ground. You have to, you have to figure like the roots go so much deeper. So you have to, I mean, this whole mound that these trees are on, you know, underneath all of that, that uh, earth is like more 
roots. These are only the roots that like have been exposed through erosion. In fact, you know, typically all of these ro roots would be submerged. It's just the tree is probably so big and so old that the ground has actually like washed away and, you know, has exposed these. I'm, I mean, I'm even imagining like, you know, you know, the, tr you know the, 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 the line for the dirt probably would have come up like that far, you know, for most of its life. Oh, I think that's so interesting. And to imagine the whole root system that we can't see. Exactly, exactly. It's mind blowing. Um, so it looks like there's three groupings of roots, which is, which, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's important to use like numbers and simplify things. You have like one, the tree trunk, but then you have a grouping of root systems that's on the right. Then we have this grouping that's in the center, which is like less, you know, there's like not as many, there's, there's a lot smaller ones on that one. And then we have this one that's on the left. So you have left, center, and right. And that's kind of like very manageable. I think, and unless you don't, unless you're like trying to, um, you kind of like almost like chaotically draw all of them. Um, if you just like subdivide them into the, the separate systems, it should be okay. And then we'll link up the right side with this left side. looks like that tree even has like a knot in it. That's so fascinating. So for the most part, I've been building out of straight lines just because I'm a little bit scared. Um, but I've been noticed like this side has a curve, this side has a curve. Um, if you see a curve as an enclosure, you know, use it. It's kind of like as they start extending, um, I might pull this one up. So this is where you can, this is where I was going like my paper. I don't, I can't, I've, I've like run out of room. So I'm actually going to pull my root system up so that it fits onto the sheet. Nice. I'll cut this one up a little bit more. And then it kind of like disappears into the ground as well. <clears throat> this is kind of like, this is kind of like free forming. Um, and just like we had the column and just like we had the tones in the shield, there's going to be, um, I think the lightest part is going to be the, the tabletop. And then most of the, um, you know, most of the tree and its bark and the, and the roots are going to be gray. And then there's going to be some, you know, some dark lines. So that should be awesome, actually. I'm going to curve, you know, I'm going to, I haven't even thought about this third system yet. It looks like they've got, um, you know, this one kind of curves up. I've got plenty of room um, on this one. It's unfortunate actually that the middle one is kind of the, like kind of the main event. I think if you're gonna focus most of your energy, I feel like it's on this one, it's on the center one and the right side one. Um, but now I have all this room on my paper. So maybe I do change that a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger, kind of more impressive. There's a, uh, a tree in my neighborhood that is, you know, it, it, it is actually this big. Um, it's still alive and it's still up, you know, it's still standing. It's, it's got a big hole in it. Um, so I don't know if it's the healthiest trees of trees, but it is magnificent. It's like sitting on this ridge and I, you know, you, know, you can like contemplate the root system that's below that. They call it first growth. So it's like the, I don't know if it's technically the first growth, but it's the oldest tree in this entire forest of, uh, you know, tulip poplars. And it has a huge radius around it. Like none of the trees can even get close um, because it's so vast and so large. <clears throat> okay, so when I think about, um, when I think about drawing, um, I honestly, I think about coloring books because that's kind of what painting is. You know, you make the lines, that's the drawing, and then you color it in. And that's the, uh, that's the painting part, you, you paint it with colors. Um, so I'm trying to like sketch in what I need to color in. And I'm not actually using color, I'm actually just using tone. So if you just use lights and darks, 
um, you use the initial lines um, to kind of section off the parts that need um, toning. So I'm not quite there yet, um, but I have the major parts. I have the ground, which doesn't take very much toning at all. There's like a little texture there. It's mostly light. Um, I have my um, root system, you know, loosely plopped in. I've got the bark on the side of the tree, which needs a little bit more refinement. Um, you know, the, some of the bark comes, you know, it, it like dips down below the stump and it kind of, and then part of it like climbs up, you know, around the stump. So that's good. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And then I have the stump itself. So it's a light, it's really pretty much a light tree trunk up against the um, dark of the background. And then when it's on the hill, it's a dark root system up against the light of the hill. Isn't that amazing? So it's like by making the tree trunk gray, um, it can be light up against super dark, and then it can also be dark up against light. And that's why the artist had to make the background so dark, <clears throat> um, because it's the only way this dark gray of the tree can stand out. So um, just be aware of that. Like as you sketch in you know, these little chunks of, uh, of bark that are peeking up almost like, you know, broken or crooked teeth um, on the back end, you know, this, those lines are going to be blended into the background. We don't need to draw a lot of details in the background, but we do need to know that the background is dark. Well, I'm not going to do any of the details, so I'm just going to, I think where I'm going to go is just make the background kind of nice and smooth and quiet. Dark, but smooth. And Dore has definitely put together a, uh, an event for us here. Um, the nice thing about the column is that we had the light coming from the left. So everything on the right was in shadow. Um, our light is coming from the right. So everything on the left is in shadow. So it's kind of the opposite. So um, as I finish the bark you know, on this side, look at how the bark on the far left really goes dark. And he uses straight lines, just like he did on the column. And then where he wants the bark to be a little bit lighter, he uses lighter lines. And he spaces them out. So I feel like the side of the tree, <clears throat> I, don't know, I don't know if I want to call it easy, but um, it's not as like, it's not as knotty and it's not as twisty and turning. It's, it's very pleasantly, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a long straight tree. And then where things start to get really funky um, is in, the, uh, is in the, the roots. And this is maybe what I was talking about with this lava business. Like, Look at how in the middle of this tree, it kind of curves in and then it like almost like curls under. So I'm trying to follow, um, you know, I'm trying to follow the flow of these branches. And they're not really branches, I, I, I misspoke. They're, they're the roots but they, they function like branches. A lot of the lines, you know, go in the same direction of the flow and then some of them go counter to it. I'm gonna just draw this up here. Um, so this branch right here, you know, some of the, the lines go in the direction of the branch and then some of them go counter to it. And you, that's, and you can use the um, one direction and the opposite direction. And the way that they overlap 
is really helpful for um, creating shadows. You can almost like feel the form of the tree, um, you know, by finding the way that the, um, the bark, you know, twists and moves into um, the flow. And you can, you know, follow that silhouette line and then do lines that are counter to it. And when I say counter, I mean like, if there's a line that goes this way, the counter mark is opposite. And I think that's how the whole thing is composed. Like this edge here, counter lines. Follow this edge, counter lines. Follow this edge, counter lines. <clears throat> now, if you guys look what I just did, when I just drew, I just darkened um, this little moment where the, um, where the root was really close to the ground. And that, that dark note is, it's kind of like this classic thing where you have, so I have like a little cup on a table If the cup's on that table, if I want to make it seem like it's touching the ground, I darken the bottom line. And so that's like this moment where there's like a contact point. Now, I think the shadows, you know, at that contact point in the root might even be um, a little bit darker because I think there might be like the root might be up off the ground ever so slightly. So probably the, the, the darker the line, you know, the deeper the shadow because the, um, you know, no light can get underneath that root. So they're almost like miniature caves. Wow. Mm -hmm. So whenever I find a silhouetted edge, like a curve on the side, I'm gonna think about shading it counter to it. So if this is gonna curve this way, I can do counter bracelet lines, curve this way, counter bracelet lines. This looks like it's a finger like touching the ground. Counter bracelet lines. I love these little like the dirt is, it's not, I don't, I'm, I'm, this guy is anything but lazy, um, but sometimes less is more. And when you look at the ground, there's just these little tick marks. And it's just like the most amazing thing, how it just like suggests a little bit of the ground, you know, like a little bit of light padded down dirt. Hey, Sebastian, did you get booted off? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a um, kind of a slow and steady kind of exercise. So there's some deep root systems under here. Your line work and your um, your line work makes it read much more realistically than his. Yeah, Whoa. absolutely. Thank you. You're hey, welcome. Sebastian, welcome back. Yeah, my computer battery died. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So. I don't, I, I hopefully I'm making it, I'm kind of making this clear. I'm just going to 
draw this one thing just so I can make it. So imagine you had a root system that went like this. Let's just call it a triangle. So what I mean is, is that bracelet lines can then make it into like a cone. So like I just started with a triangle and by putting these curvilinear lines in there and then you combine it with more lines that go in the direction and then you come in with bracelet lines. You know, you can do the same thing honestly with like a cube. If you start with a cube, there's not much of a cube here, but the lines go this way and this way. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So if I have, I go one last thing in here. So I'll just do a curvy, um, you know, a curvy triangle, then the counter lines run like this. And I can actually almost make it look, yeah, I make it look three dimensional, but it's the only, in the only direction I'm using is the silhouette line and the counter to the silhouette line. And then you just use those lines to the level um, where there's shade. So it's the darker you use more of them, if it's lighter, you use less of them, but you can only really do two different directions. Hopefully that I made that clear, unless there's like some weird texture, like, you know, there's like a notch, you know, like weird bark or something and you make it like, you know, make it look textured or something. But that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. And I, it's, it's like not necessarily the easiest concept ever. Um, you know, and then I darken the bottoms where there's like a hole and it does, it really does. It's amazing. Like, those little techniques, how yeah, three dimensional you can actually make things look. <clears throat> and I think, I mean, you know, I hopefully I didn't make this lesson too difficult because sometimes, sometimes I'll pick things that I think are so hard and then they're super easy. And then I'll pick things that I think are super easy and then they're like really hard. So I don't know. And then sometimes I'll think that something's really hard and everyone else is like, yeah, that was easy. I'm like, oh, okay. So I can't even tell because no one's been showing me their art. So like I have, like, no, I idea whether, I have no idea whether <laughs> this is good or bad, but um, hopefully it wasn't too challenging. Let me check my, uh, make sure there's no parents texting me here. Well, I, thought, I thought this was great, Trevor. Oh, thanks, Stace. Sure, thank you so much. All right, let's see what I can do here. I can keep this going. I'm gonna follow my twisty turns. And the um, the fun part is, is like once you get the once you kind of get the hang of it, you can make the roots go any way you want. You know, the bottom of the root stays darker, the top stays a little lighter, and then the side goes from dark on the bottom to light at the top. And if you, um, if you lose track of what you're doing, you can always look back up and copy what he's doing. <clears throat> and I'm going, I mean, I'm going off what I've got on the screen and I think it looks kind of good too. I wish that, um, I wish I had a little bit more time, but. Um, so one of the things that you can also do is, it was like, if you, if, you if you can't figure out what's going on with the root, and, I, and I, that's where I am right now. So all I can do is teach what's going on in my head. And what I'm thinking is like, I, I, um, 
I don't know how he drew it. So in a way, I'm almost just copying whatever his marks are. And you know, there were these little, there's these little like, um, it was a string of little con concavities. So I'm just, just copying. And then hopefully, and I can see that it was kind of like a, it was almost like the webbing in between your fingers. It was almost like leading from one finger to another. And you know, I like, I, I hadn't thought of that, but I had to copy what he was doing in order for me to understand that one, one route was going to the left and one was going to the right and the other was going to the left. So I didn't mean to make it out of focus. I mean, they look like, that looks like a snake. Got the curve of the snake, the notch of the head, bracelet lines. I don't know how there could be, oh, I guess that's right. I was gonna say, I don't know how there could be a knot in a tree when it's the root, but I guess if there was a, if there was a root that came out and it broke off, you know, the, the, the roots are branches too. So if a root breaks off, it'll be a knot. I have to admit, I've never really considered that before. So I got my curviness at the bottom. I've got my hard shadows on the right. So yeah, and I had to, I had, this is the, the route that I had to re-sketch so it would fit on there. Look at these little hooks. They almost look like they hook into the, into the dirt like that. Yeah, like talons. Yeah, I mean they've that the this little stretch feels very mm -hmm. like a talon. Yeah, the one on the far right, uh, the furthest right root system reminds me of a lobster. I mean, I see so many different forms within the roots. Yeah. I'm still th sticking with my my three main elements, and I and I and I'm just going to repeat them just to like kind of make it clear. The you have the silhouette, which is you know the the outside, and that's going you know one way and starting thick and going to thin, and then you have the lines that are counter to that, and then those are the two marks that you use to achieve the texture and the shading. And then the only other thing you have to worry about is if, it, if the side of the root goes really dark or if the root comes up off of the ground, it also goes really dark. So there's really only, there's only, really only four marks that we're making. Um, that, you know, the, this, the edge of the, the edge of the, the root, the edge on the bottom, the edge on the top, the counter marks to it, and then you know shading as it relates to the uh, the ground. And this this whole root system that I'm doing on the left here, that blends in to the shadow side of the tree and is probably completely in shadow. So all the marks I'm using here, again, just using the silhouette as well as the contour, but I'm making the marks dark and really close together. So that that root, you know, is only composed of the, the, the marks that are correct, but they're also in shadow. That's good. Wowzers. That hill kind of goes up over there. Now there's all kinds of other stuff happening back here. I think I'm just going to give it a nice light tone because I don't want to, I, I honestly, I don't really want to worry about it. I got too much going on. We only have about 15 minutes left. So I really want to finish my roots and just hopefully bite off the perfect amount. 
There's a little gray back there. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we lost Trev. So there's all this other activity. I think these are um, people um, back here, like little people off in the distance. And again, I'm not really trying to um, draw them all, but I will put um, a little bit of tone in there. Make this the edge of my picture. I'll make this the bottom. You know, the bottom of the picture will be the bottom of the picture. And I have all of this room. I think I should do a picnic. There's a picnic blanket. I'm not going to get too creative yet. Um, have you guys ever heard anybody get in trouble on Zoom? Like, uh, I never have. I, for some reason, I thought you were going to say on a saying, social platform. And I know some people who've had some comments removed from Facebook, but I don't know of anything on Zoom. Yeah, I'm just imagining if like, you know, somebody got, if you're, if you're like, you got in trouble for doing, I don't know, who knows what you would, what you could do wrong. But like you're on Zoom and your, your mom comes in and like, you didn't take out the trash. And you're like, mom. Oh, yes. Hello. I've been guilty of that. And you've, you've yelled at Morgan or Morgan? Well, no, I mean. yelled at you? Surely you can't even imagine me yelling. No, no. But I have yes. opened Morgan's door and he's been on a Zoom in a Zoom class, unbeknownst to me, he's like, Mom, shh, shh, go out, <laughs> leave, leave. <laughs> All right, here we go. You know, finish, I'm gonna try and finish my land here. Oh, I guess the tabletop does have a little bit of action on there. Very faint lines, but I'm doing a horizontal so I can suggest the plane. Um, we also, Stace, remember we did that tree yesterday? Yes. Uh, just, guys, one of the things we did with the tree, we found the center and then, and I don't know if this has it, I don't think he's doing this, but you could try to find those rings. You know how you count the rings? You see how old the tree is? Um, it's not an effect that he's using, but it might be a cool one. There's my tree and my, my bark. Anyway, I think that might look good. I'm gonna try it. Oh, wow. I was just gonna ask, could you please square your paper, Trevor? Thank you. You're welcome. Count the rings, count the rings. Well, I guys, I hope you found this to be, um, I hope you found this fun. I um. I never quite know what's going to happen when we get in here. Yes, on this end. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> Even some of the ground um, seems to be in shadow back here in this far corner. I don't know. 
Maybe that's the shadow of the tree stump. So you can layer these um, and you can just really build, build a really imp like impressive number of um, variations. You know, I'm looking at the sides of the bark, you know, the thickness of the bark where on the left side, it's in shadow. It's like this crease in the middle. Um, you know, I, I started off kind of formal, but you know, there's gotta be ways that you can you know, make it make it look not not chaotic, but you can imagine like somehow like bark bark on trees is just like there's so much going on. Maybe you use it, maybe use darker tones and more regular things on the shadow on the shadow side so that it um because if you need more marks. Yeah, cool. I'm not gonna put in the picnic. I always get these ideas. They're kind of comical, but not that funny. See, I think it makes for a much nicer composition without as much to, as much activity around it. Of course, that's just my personal preference no. because it feels to, so busy that it takes away from the beauty of the trunk with so much else happening around it. No, I think Even I though I, I appreciate the story. Yeah, I mean, just kind of isolating it. It does have kind of an uh, it's unique it's unique beauty just focusing on just that one component. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you're right. I like that. Um, and the reason I do these too is like when you go to the museum um, and you're looking at paintings, um, you don't it, to, to, you can like sink your teeth into like little parts. You, know, you don't have to feel like you have to design the whole thing or draw the whole thing or copy the whole thing or even understand the whole thing. You can just like, you can just like look at, you know, like one fingernail on, you know, one of the pieces and like think con contemplate the brush strokes that it took to get that one thumb, um, you know, or just like one button. Like you can go to the museum and you can spend a whole two hours just looking at, you know, like a one, the way like Chardon painted one playing card. You know, just like this one little passage. There's just so much to understand, and there's so many, um, so many insights that you can have. And yeah, we. I mean, you can make a case that I, you know, we drew maybe a little too much today, but I don't know. I mean, I like to have a little bit of variety. Um, I like to have you know easy things and then hard things, organic things, man-made things. Um, anyway. And it's a snow day. You know, so I feel like snow days are a good day to, to take a risk. <clears throat> I don't want to no, I don't want to screw it up. Um, the overall there is seems to be like some kind of an overall tone and that's what we did with the shield, you know, just like kind of coming through and maybe instead of you know increasing the mark making maybe just increasing you know, the unit, like almost like blending with a, a very general tip of my, my, uh, my pencil and trying to unify the, um, you know, the root system with just like a very gentle mid-tone gray. That might, you know, if you, if there's some area that you kind of didn't do so well, um, you know, maybe toning it will just hide some of those, uh, you know, the irregularities. Yeah, I don't even know. I I don't I don't know what the rest of the allegory is doing. 
There's like so many people back there. And even these guys um, on this little, on this little section of mountain, you know, they're that, look at that big log. They're, they're like all sitting on a log. It's three guys at the foot of it. That's nice. Look at the, um, mm -hmm. look, at, look at the, it's like a CT scan. Or like, yeah. a, or like a cross section of that. And this yeah. one, you can, you can see the, um, a little bit of the suggestion of the, the rings from the growth pattern in the center of the tree. I'm just trying to look around and see what's more in the picture. There's a, um, there's also a, uh, you know, a secondary tree back there. Mm -hmm. straight so i wonder what this there's like some a-frame some man-made a-frame back there could be some kind of pulley system oh yeah oh wow y'all i'm gonna i'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can we can see this but um If you look, I was I was I was looking, and there were just these. Um, at first, I thought it was just those two big trees. If you look off in the background, let me see if I can zoom in. You see all those angles back there. See these angles through the trees. Yeah. I think these are all more cedars coming down. Oh wow. I think they're cutting down basically like almost an entire forest of uh, cedars to get the to get the wood. So there, there's like thousands of people, you know, harvesting these these trees. Incredible. Look at all these horses down here. I mean, the composition, you know, at, at some point, it's just, it's just overwhelming. I mean, the guy's brain is just incredible. Like on like fire. Bigger, so yeah, he's, in, he's just super talented, super invested. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we take Trevor, a- can I, can I please see yours once again? Yeah. And then if we could do a, um, if we could do a little show and tell, I would be, I would be the happiest of our teachers. Do you want to take a photo of that? Yeah, yeah, I would. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody want to show what they got? I'm going to stop the share. Let's see what we got. And honestly, I mean, if you're working on anything else, I'm just curious to see what was happening for those two hours. Okay, yeah, Sebastian, let's see it. I'm going to- uh, I'm Sebastian. Gonna oh, very nice. Oh my God, you did you it. Hold that nice and still. <laughs> Yes, bro. Oh, thank you. Thank well done, Sebastian. You. Uh, Maya, can I see? Can I see yours? What you were up to? Nico, you're at your next. Stella. For the last one, I was not doing. Thank you, Sebastian. The drawing because I was doing all my own thing. Okay, if you could do mine. That's fine. Right? That's good. But I can't really show it since it's on a device. Oh. Uh, uh, did you do the column or the shield? Did you do either of those? Um, I did the column. Let me do a quick one. Oh yeah, I can actually see this one better because I'm oh. Can you hold that a little bit closer to you, a little further from the screen? A little further from the screen, closer <laughs> to your face. I love your dog. I love your little puppy up there. Thank All you. Right. Nika, let's see what you got. Um, it says my face when tree stuff. Whoa. Sweet. Fun. Wait, so what is that? Yeah, that's what is fun. going on there? It's their soul leaving their face. Excellent. That sounds very super fun. nice. Very super fun nice. Uh, well, thanks for doing the column anyway. <laughs> uh, Estelle, you want to show yours? Um, I don't know. Yes. 
Um, and then, I don't know, I don't, I don't see, I don't hear. I can't see, I can't hear, I'm blind. Um, Kaya, can we see yours? I don't know if Kaya's there. I haven't heard from uh, you at all. I'm okay. You don't want to show up? That's okay. Cool. No worries. Stace, can I see yours one more la one last time? Sure. Since um, I've been working on it a little gonna, bit. Hold on, I got to replace the pen. Place pen. Holy crap. That's good. That's scary. Thanks. The column is scarier than I had, had <laughs> noticed at first. It's scary. I mean, it is what it yeah. is. Yeah. It is what it is. I think it's the angle of the brows. The angle of the brow is like flexed. Like yeah. That. So I don't know, that's that's enough to startle anybody. Um, okay. Well, everybody, that was fun. I think next week we'll do something maybe a little bit less intense, more low key. Um, not low key, but you know, that was hardcore. Um, hope you liked it. Um, if you want to send pictures or email the pictures, um, I, I love to see them and I like to post them too. I have a week. Trevor, everybody. Thank you so much. This was um, great. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm glad. I'm glad you dug it.